Coming up on this episode of The Social Hour, Google Plus continues to grow, but not without some growing pains. Bieber almost breaks Instagram, and Facebook's not-so-secret iPad app. All that plus sonar, infographics, and Fabio. All next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Social Hour is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of the Social Hour is brought to you by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to create a high quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code SocialHour7. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30 day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Welcome to the Social Hour, episode 18, which not only means, Amber, that we are adults, but we're also in the new studio. I'm Sarah Lane from Petaluma's new Twit Brick House. And I'm Amber MacArthur from uh, Drummondville. I think I'm in Drummondville, Quebec. I'm on my way home from Prince Edward Island, and I'm in the car once again. This is the second episode of this show that uh, I have done in the car. Well, it was uh, previously called Net at Night, and I did an episode with Leo in the back seat of the car, but now I'm in the front seat, not driving, so I'm staying safe. So you're not, you're not like, living in your car or anything. For anyone who's tuning in and wondering, is Amber <laughs> falling on hard times? Everything's okay. You're no, just in no. transit. Things are good, but if I start to, you know, sweat a lot and I start to sound faint, you know, someone just, uh, you know, give someone a call. Yeah, yeah. Amber, she, she's en route and she's very warm. I hope you have uh, enough liquids, maybe some Gatorade or something like that. I, I, you know what, my laptop right now is set on top of a cooler, so uh, there are tons of drinks. I'm hydrating and uh, I'm all good, excited to talk about social news. Me too. This is, uh, okay, so uh, everyone who's tuning in right now, whether you're watching live or you're, you're watching the broadcast later on. Obviously, we're on a completely new set. We, we Twit broke ground uh, with Twit and a few episodes of, of the Daily Gizwiz yesterday in our brand new studio. Obviously, everything is completely different. I'm getting used to looking at Amber as if she's next to me right now, even though it's never, we've never had the opportunity to do this before because he used to be over this shoulder on a Skyposaurus. And I mean, it is a completely bizarro world, even though it looks great. It's like, ah, I'm just trying to get used to looking at you. I kind of feel like I can just reach out and touch you. <laughs> it's and it's really even weirder strange. that I am in a car. Let's. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, today of all days, it just Amber just decided, you know, it, since it's going to be weird, let's kick it up a notch and I'll just sit in let's my take car. It to a whole new level. And we'll just try to get through the show without, uh, you know, bursting into laughter or tears. Hard to say. Uh, but no, this is The Social Hour. It's the show that you know and love. We're 18 episodes in. Uh, we're very excited to be uh, in our new studio. And Amber, th we've talked about where we were going to shoot the show in the new studio. And this is actually the round table set. So I'm sitting in the chair that Leo sat in yesterday for Twit. And it's not necessarily going to be the show that we continue on but for now I think it works out pretty well it's just the two of us you're on Skype so we decided let's just go with this set now because we know it works it might change next week but if you guys like it the way it is let us know the social hour twit.tv this is actually a really good show for you to write in as much feedback as you could possibly think of because we will take all of that and use it not just for this show but for other shows that are also using this set so we can figure out what's the best experience for all of you without further ado let us get to our hot topics, um, one of which is Google Plus is still top dog. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people are thinking that we've uh, devoted a lot of time and energy to Google Plus. Clearly, one of the reasons is that so many people are using Google Plus. Last week, we reported that they had about 
10 million users, mm -hmm. that number has doubled in uh, just uh, about seven days. So uh, 20 million users now using Google Plus, and uh, that's pretty substantial, sir. Yeah, I mean, that's a huge growth. The growth is, I, I don't know, I mean, it just keeps growing. What I thought was interesting, too, is some of the statistics, when you break them down, there's about 5 million U.S. users. So you go, okay, well, where's everybody else coming from? Uh, India is almost at 3 million itself. So it's experienced okay. very rapid growth in a short amount of time. And even though New York in the U.S. is the biggest market per capita, it's not actually ranking, um, it, you know, in an index that Hitwise put together, sort of like who, what cities are, are the most Google Plus friendly. Austin, Texas, actually, it, it, per capita, ends up being the top U.S. city. Um, but then as far as just who's bringing the most traffic um, into Google Plus, San Francisco, New York, and L.A. just in sheer numbers of people. Um, are contributing the most to overall Google Plus usage, which is really interesting. I mean, I guess India is not, you know, it's certainly not a surprise, but uh, it's amazing yeah. how things catch on quickly in a country and then it's like everyone's using it because word spreads. And when you have a lot of people, it, it has definitely happened uh, quite quickly. The only disappointing thing for me, Sarah, and I'm sure you feel the same way, is for brands out there who want to establish a presence on Google+, Plus. you know, they still haven't quite figured out uh, uh, how that can be done in a really uh, neat and kind of a, a different way that gives those companies the opportunities to have features that uh, are relevant to be able to promote their product or services. Yeah, and in fact, I know that um, uh, Google+, Plus has said, uh, that that business accounts are coming. They've got some Google app stuff to work out. I'm not actually, I've complained about that quite a bit already because I have, we use Twit email through Google apps, but then I have several Gmail accounts, the social hour being one of them, and they don't play very well together. So I have to use multiple browsers or go incognito on Chrome and it's just, there's some kinks to work out, that's fine. What I have heard um, from both sides is I know Mashable, they had a Google Plus account that had a lot of followers, uh, friends, or people, people who had added Mashable into circles, and then Google said, well, hey, Mashable, you can't do that because that's not an uh, individual with a name. Mm -hmm. And because Pete Cashmore is sort of the face of Mashable, he said, listen, you know, I'm, I am a real person. Mashable is also my personal Twitter account. Uh, can you make an exception type of a thing? We're obviously... We're, we're very popular on Google Plus and we want to keep using it. It's working out really well for us. And Google ended up uh, working with Mashable to reinstate the account. But there are other people who have had similar problems and they are individuals. They're just not necessarily comfortable using first and last name. I know one of one of our friends and, and a big Twit fan, Dana, uh, who Amber, I'm sure you've met uh, somewhere along the way because she's everywhere. Um, Dana was, uh, she had had her, it's uh, D-A-Y-N-A-H. Hi, Dana. I'm sure, I'm sure you're watching or you'll, you'll hear about this eventually. Um, she had said she had her Google Plus account at least suspended, not necessarily taken down completely, but she couldn't access it because she's kind of a one-word name person. I don't even know her last name. Um, and so so that's, that's a shame for people who are clearly not trying to abuse the system, but for whatever reason, they just don't fall under the constraints that Google Plus is giving people right now. So I'm not really sure how they're going to figure that stuff out, but they'll have to if they don't want to upset um, uh, enthusiastic users. Well, they, ha they have to realize, too, I mean, there are so many brands out there who are just so keen to get on Google+. Plus and, it, you know, it's been a few weeks, and it, it's, there's really no uh, hard and fast uh, deadline for Google+, Plus actually launching uh, a, a platform for these brands. So I think, again, you know, I love Google+, Plus, a big fan, love all the conversations that are happening. Um, but uh, on the social media side of things, when you're talking about marketing, um, I think that's the only negative right now is the inability for a company to really get involved. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move on to some really exciting Facebook news. So we've talked about, Amber, you and I have definitely talked about the fact that Facebook is coming out with an app. Then they're, they're you know, maybe they're working on some HTML5 project called Project Spartan. Um, there have been quite a bit of reports. TechCrunch uh, recently, <laughs> as recently as this, this is written by MG, who happens to be. Uh, my significant other, so it just it's just kind of funny. I didn't actually realize this until I read the article this morning. Oh, that's what he was working on last night because I was staying at my mom's last night. Just small world. But uh, 
He, uh, it turns out that uh, Facebook had updated their iPhone app, which has been around for a long time. And whether you like it or not, it's, it works. It's not fully featured, but it, it works. And, you know, that's why people have said, well, why doesn't Facebook come out with an iPad app? They've got an iPhone app. Can't they at least make it universal? And Facebook's always been kind of more on the, we're going we're gonna to go um, do some sort of native HTML5 experience. We're not too keen on the iPad app experience. Well... The iPhone updated to 3.4.4, so you might have updated and you might not have noticed anything. It didn't really look very different. There were some minor bug fixes, but it turns out that that update also includes code that shows that there is an iPad app uh, sort of within that code that isn't live yet, but if you jailbreak a device, we don't have to go into all of that, but if you're a jailbreaker, you kind of know how to do that sort of thing. You can yeah. uh, you, you you can access this iPad app, which again isn't live yet. It might change, but um, TechCrunch has a bunch of uh, screenshots of the iPad app in use and how it looks. I mean, it looks pretty good. Um, definitely different different than the web experience, which um, Amber, I don't know about you, but I've I've just decided, okay, well, there are a lot of uh, Facebook alternative, not, not officially Facebook-sanctioned iPad apps that I've just kind of stopped using because they don't really work the way that I would expect Facebook to work. Friendly is a, is a paid app that a lot of people have used. I was using it for a while, and uh, it just didn't work as well as I wanted it to work. So this is exciting for me. I, 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 I guess I'm... I, I'm not really sure what, what Facebook is doing by, by saying that they're not working on an iPad app, you know, and, and that it's not high on and the priority I, list, <laughs> which they clearly so are. Strange. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, would you, do you, do you like the look of this? What do you think? Uh, yeah, no, I think, I think it looks really good. And, um, I think it would be hugely popular. And again, it, it, it probably ties in nicely to our first story, just in terms of, you know, what are you waiting for? Right. We should have that as a new segment on the show. What are you waiting for, Sarah? Right. <laughs> yeah. Companies that are slow, like Instagram, you know, having, uh, a really, uh, a, a good, uh, uh, experience beyond the iPhone. Yeah. I, I, I love the idea. Um, I think it's kind of fun when, people pull out uh, information like this based on some what seems like very innocuous code and uh, I you know I, I am excited for a Facebook app because I am an iPad user obviously I, I you know Leo and I host iPad today so I have a lot of vested interest in seeing a successful iPad app out there um, it, but it's, it's always fun when uh, someone someone breaks a story that clearly Facebook was not ready to talk about yet and by the way somebody in the chat room had said oh they've disabled this you can't even you can't even access the iPad app anymore not surprising um, but uh, but but not in time for for uh, someone to to not get screenshots. So. They're just teasing us, Sarah. They're teasing us, yeah. So it's coming. Something's coming anyway. If it doesn't look like that, then I can only expect it to look a lot better because it already looks pretty good. Uh, you can obviously go to TechCrunch and, and, um, and see all those. They, they don't actually have a slideshow at TechCrunch. They've got this weird site where you have to manually click onto all these uh, pictures. So it was kind of hard for us to show during the show, but uh, we'll have that uh, link in our show notes as well at twit.tv slash TSH. Finally, in some Twitter news... Uh, yes. it, Amber, I, I don't know, um, I think he's Canadian, so maybe you've heard of him. Uh, it, there's this, yes. there's this singer, uh, he's kind of a big deal in the U.S., uh, Justin, uh, uh, Bieber? Bieber, uh, Bieber. I yeah. Bieber. He, yeah. He's, uh, he's uh, a he, singer, I guess? Yes, a, a pretty big singer, I think. You know, the funny thing is, Sarah, um, not to get too sidetracked, but uh, when Justin Bieber's movie first came out, Never Say Never, Leo had said it was a really good movie, movie and I just kind of chuckled, and I thought, oh, my gosh, there's no way I'm ever going to watch that. And uh, as you know, I do a lot of traveling, and I've been flying a lot, and uh, I, I had a chance to see his movie because I saw every other movie, and I have to say, <laughs> it's really good. I'm not a huge fan in terms of listening to his music, but uh, um, I have a new appreciation for Justin Bieber. I said it here. Okay. Uh, and no judgment. He is also <laughs> using uh, Instagram now, and all of his followers, uh, 11 million strong, are obviously seeing these images, and they are flocking uh, to Instagram as well. So it's great. Okay, so Justin Bieber joins Instagram. He's probably seen enough links via Twitter, because, of course, a lot of people will will add an Instagram link via Twitter and so he's seeing oh you know all these pictures of of uh, you know that with these interesting filters that people are using so he go ahead, goes ahead and joins Instagram and yeah like you said he's got about 11 million tw Twitter followers so you can imagine that Instagram got at least 
Oh, I don't know. I, I mean, I wouldn't even venture a guess how many signups they might have gotten within the first hour of seeing that Instagram link if they weren't already using Instagram. But, I mean, he's getting, like... 50 new followers a minute on Instagram. I mean, crazy statistics. And again, the folks over at TechCrunch called up Instagram and said, is this something that you, you know, did, did you put it together? Are you working with his management team? What's the situation? And no, I mean, they, it was just kind of a happy accident for them. And they're just lucky that, uh, you know, the, the site didn't go down, that it maintained. I think that yeah, particular just, yeah. Instagram picture, which is like the most boring picture in the world, uh, as some pictures on Instagram are, Although he did use a filter, it was like a picture of some traffic in L.A. And he said, traffic sucks or something. And when I checked it this morning, it had like 1,200 likes, which isn't the most likes I've ever seen on Instagram, but that's really high. So That's pretty high. Yeah. It just goes to show you that uh, if you're a star, you can, uh, you can make things move. You have, a, you have a lot of power. And, and Sarah, I just wanted to mention one thing about Instagram. I was reading an article uh, not that long ago about how brands are using Instagram, and uh, one of the top brands on Instagram uh, has been Red Bull, and uh, I guess they take sort of a picture every day and do kind of creative stuff. Um, it ties into their audience really well in terms of their audience liking Instagram, so uh, we're seeing more and more brands use Instagram as well. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love Instagram. I, I think it's a great service. I've, I've definitely, I've found some Instagram stars. There's an account called Fashion, um, which I, I think is just one guy who lives in New York who takes just pictures of people on the street, you know, and it, there's like a fashion slant. I mean, he gets so many likes every time. It's kind of amazing. But he also takes really good pictures. So it's like there are, there are certain um, people who are kind of rising in the ranks because they're talented and, and for whatever reason they've just gotten some attention. And also Instagram does have a suggested users list. You might not realize that because they don't make a big deal promoting it kind of, or, or just didn't get as much attention as when Twitter was doing that and people were getting a million followers and you'd never heard of them before. But there is one. So, so that, that does change things a little bit. Justin Bieber does not be, need to be on any suggested users list, obviously. And if you're a, if you're a Bieber fan, um, you might want to follow him. It's just, uh, hey. A believer, I think so. Oh, a believer, I'm sorry. So Never Say Never Something is kind like of that. the story of him, how he got how he started as like a really young kid who had a lot of artistic talent. Isn't that right? So it's kind of like a, I came from nothing and I became a big star. Even if you don't like me, you have to appreciate everything that I went through to get here. Is that the idea? Yeah. And I mean, I think the thing that interests me the most was uh, actually on the social side and, and how he was one of the, the first stars to truly build such a massive online following before he was even mainstream. So he had millions and millions of these young teenage girls, mostly, who were huge fans of his. And so even though the record labels, you know, at first didn't want to sign him, they almost had to because he had built such uh, an enormous base of followers. Yeah. In a really short amount of time, too, on YouTube. It's so weird. It's like, yeah, these things happen. It's uh, it's amazing. I, I don't, I got nothing against the kid. He's a kid still, right? He's under 18. I don't, I don't want yeah, to seem he's like younger I'm... than the social hour. <laughs> well, that means he's really young. Okay, well, Justin Bieber's on Instagram, so if you like him, follow him up. Uh, I'm sure you won't be just disappointed. Um, for all the links that we've talked about already on the show, and anytime you, you, you maybe you've you, you watched episode 15 recently, because of course you can see all of our shows on demand if you don't visit the, li or if you're not able to watch the live stream, and you think, well, they talked about the service, and I, for the life of me, can't remember. I get a lot of emails from people saying, you, t you, you went through the URL too fast. I didn't have time to, to write it down, and, and now I want to visit the site, and I don't remember what it is. We try our very best to add everything we talk about into our show notes. Now, our website is going to change sooner than later. But for now, when you go to any of our show pages, and that's twit.tv slash TSH, and you can see all of our episodes, that's, uh, that's last week's episode. Um, when, you, when you look at the description of the show, there's a show notes area. Yeah, thank you, Chad. This is so fun. Chad is showing you in real time where the show notes are. When you click on that area, um, it takes you to our wiki where... Um, Leo's sister, actually, Eva, um, and, and some people from the community try to add in as much information on everything that we talked about that comes straight from our doc. Um, so if you get stuck and I haven't answered you uh, via email yet, 
definitely check our show notes. Any show. Um, sometimes it takes a couple days to get that stuff propagated, but we don't ever want to leave you in the lurch. So make sure that you, you check all of that. And so everything we talked about today would be in there as well. That's twit.tv slash TSH, which is also where you can subscribe to our show. If you can't watch the live stream or you forget Monday's a tough day for you or, or maybe you just want to um, subscribe to our audio feed because you do a lot of driving or whatever. That's where you get all of those links. That's our, our show uh, ground zero type of thing. Uh, before we get going, Amber, we want to thank Squarespace. They are our first of two sponsors from our new, exciting Twit Studio, and we thank them so much for their support. If you're not familiar with Squarespace, I really don't know uh, what you're waiting for because it is the fastest and easiest way to create a high-quality website or blog. Chad, do you want to pull up Squarespace and show people some examples on their example page? That's always what I to point people to because it's like, okay, okay, I know you think the blogs all look the same and what, how's it different than WordPress or, or you know, Tumblr? Or I, I don't know where to get started with a blog. Squarespace, if you go to their example tab, this is right on, if you go to squarespace.com and just kind of start looking through what people have created on Squarespace, that's where you really see, oh man, this is more than just sort of like a diary or, or more even than a photo gallery or or Twitter widgets, it's all that stuff, and it's a lot more. Um, it is really an amazing tool, um, and if you're a creative person or you have something to say, you can find a template. They've got a lot of templates that are just, they've already made them that you can just go ahead and start using right away, or you can go custom. You can create really, really intricate templates on your own if you're the kind of person who likes to tinker around behind the scenes. Squarespace is good because they don't, it's not for one or the other. Uh, it can be someone who has absolutely no design skill at all or somebody who, who really wants to hack it up a little bit. And if you get stuck, they've got good customer service. I'm a Squarespace user on my blog and the reason I, you know, well, one of the reasons I like them so much is I very rarely update my blog. Anybody who looks at my blog knows that I really haven't written anything since last December and that sucks. However, I do have Flickr widgets, Twitter widgets, um, a, a variety of things where if you go to my homepage, it doesn't look like I've never been there because I am really active. It's sort of a, you know, it's, a, it's an aggregate of some of my online activity. So I love the way that Squarespace works for that. So if you're interested you can try it out 14 days totally free you can import all of your data from another blog which is really helpful if you've built up a presence somewhere else and you're ready to move over to Squarespace but you don't want to start from scratch not a problem Squarespace has a great import tool I have used it myself once you have used it for 14 days if you're into it if you sign up and use social hour 7 that's your offer code social hour 7 the number 7 all one word you get 10% off of the first six months of your entire account which is awesome. Six months. So you have a lot of time with a nice, healthy discount to get familiar with Squarespace. I promise it's a, it's a really good tool. I can vouch for it uh, myself. I love the people who work there. They're a really good team, doing good work. And um, again, go to their uh, examples page and, and get inspired because uh, you, can, you can really make a cool uh, blog, website, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you can even like run your own message board if you want through Squarespace. They've got all sorts of options. So thanks to Squarespace for being our first sponsor on the new show. All right, Amber, moving on to yeah. our social tip. <laughs> yeah, you know what, sir? I, I may actually jump ahead a little bit. Please and do. go to the uh, second social tip that we have listed. This is from uh, a, a good friend of mine, Scott Stratton, who goes by at Unmarketing on Twitter. And I know you mm -hmm. stumbled across this, and I think it's a, a really interesting uh, um, observation that he's made on Twitter a number of times. He goes off on these rants, and I can say that because he is a friend. And uh, he hates when people automate tweets yeah. and messages on social media sites. And I, I think we should get him on the show maybe even next Monday because I know we don't have a guest. Um, but uh, what, what is your opinion of automating tweets? Okay, so this Where's is, this is um, yeah, so Scott Stratton, um, he is twitter.com slash unmarketing. So he's at unmarketing on Twitter. And uh, he had actually, I wasn't following him. I wasn't familiar with, uh, with Scott. And somebody had retweeted something that he said um, that was in, it, it was, it was, it was talking about um, auto tweeting services, which coincidentally is something that we talked uh, with Laura Fitton about last week. Uh, Laura Fitton from 140.com, who had mentioned a couple tools that do exactly that. Tools that aren't meant to be bots, that aren't meant to take you out of the conversation, but are sort of meant to keep the conversation going when you're going to be unavailable for 12 hours, or you might be on a long flight, or you're going to bed, and you want to be able to, uh, you know, maybe have to, uh, a tweet that goes out at midnight, or that sort of thing. And Scott says, don't do 
that. That's not that's not kosher. It's it's not you. You are you're 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 going outside of your normal behavior and that takes you out of how you would normally be on a you know, in a social media experience, which is the whole point. Now, I don't know who I agree with. I, I don't think I agree with one more than the other, but it's interesting to hear somebody who's clearly very successful. He has almost 100,000 followers on Twitter. Um, so people who are listening to him and respect his opinion saying, don't use tools like that because it's not authentic. Or that's, that's mm -hmm. he didn't say it's not authentic, but, but that's definitely the message that I'm getting from him. Now, Amber, I know that you, you're familiar with Scott. I mean, is that something that you've talked to him about before? Yeah, I haven't actually talked to him directly about that, so I'd be excited to have him on the show. But what I will say is I don't think that the social media world is that black and white, where you, you can say, okay, don't do this, do this. Because the reality is, if you look at how many people are on Twitter and other social sites, in some cases, and I've said this to him before just in Twitter conversations, um, it is okay, I think, to automate a tweet. Like, let's say you're a huge company and you have a contest that's going on for a few weeks and you want to make sure that you tweet out for people to enter, um, you know, once a day. I don't really need an authentic tweet in the sense I don't need a person sending out that tweet. If they just want to send out a link and some information, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Or you're doing customer service on behalf of a big company and you want to do the same thing. Uh, it doesn't really bother me. So uh, I, I, again, I don't, I think it's, it's more, uh, you know, shades of gray. Yeah. I, 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 I guess that's where I fall as well. I, um, I tend to think that you don't want to use too many tools as a crutch. I mean, that's, I guess that's, that's the magic. Once you're doing that, you've maybe crossed some sort of a line because you're, you're acting in a way that you wouldn't uh, normally be able to act without the help of robots. Although I'm really kind of into robots, but I, I don't know if social media is the place for them all the time. And we've got uh, our own experience with those, those sort of Twitter bots that don't always work the way that they're supposed to work. But, but yeah, I think, I think in general, it's probably a good idea to, to, um, you know, it's, it's important to keep the conversation going, but not at any expense. Um, Scott Stratton, by the yeah. way, un, unmarketing. Amber, like you said, he would be a great guest. I'm sure he's got, he can, yes. he can wax poetic about a lot of this stuff. In the meantime, definitely somebody to check out. If you're looking for somebody who's, who's in that marketing space and has um, a lot of things to say and definitely opinionated about them, uh, in the meantime, check him out on Twitter, follow him up, and, uh, and see if, he, uh, if he's got stuff for you. We, have, we had a couple of emails um, that we'll get to. The first one was actually from, it was, it was kind of like a, a pitch, from someone who works at a company called Sonar. Sonar is on my radar, and um, I'm using a lot of buzzwords, it, this company really is called Sonar. Um, it's sonar.me, S-O-N-A-R dot me. But they've been on my radar because I've been in social situations where somebody will say, oh, a friend of my friend Joyce's on Facebook is in this restaurant right now. And I go, what? How do you know that? Oh, I'm using something called Sonar, which it's what you do is if you sign up for Sonar, and this is, it's, they have an online presence, but it's pretty much just a mobile app. Where you sign up with uh, Facebook, Twitter, and or Foursquare. Those are the three services that they're connected with right now, at least you know, at launch. And so, so all of the people that I'm connected with through those services, which is a lot of people, especially on Facebook, let's say that, Amber, you and I are Facebook friends, and your friend Debbie from high school just happens to be visiting San Francisco and is eating at the same restaurant as me. If she is also using Sonar, I would get a, and we both check in, um, I would get a, uh, a, a push notification or some sort of notification that says, hey, Sarah, you don't know her, but Debbie knows Amber and she's here. So it, it's an interesting service. Um, I'm looking at Sonar right now. I don't know if you can chat, if you want to pull, pull up the, ooh, let's get me. Ooh, gosh, should I move? <laughs> Our very first over the shoulder product shot. Isn't it beautiful, everybody? So I'm looking at Sonar and I actually was kind of trying to show you guys. What sucks about it is that since I'm in Petaluma, um, this is the kind of service that's really much better in a, in a densely populated urban environment. Um, not that people aren't using a lot of Force Grand Petaluma, but they're not using a lot of sonar just yet. So I couldn't really get any notifications of who's around, but you get the idea. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a check-in based service that could be very helpful. What I don't really like about it though is, for example, I was up in Tahoe recently and, 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 um, 
David Prager, uh, who's a friend of mine who works at Revision 3, he had a pop-up notification who says, oh, God, I wasn't using sonar, sonar yet, and, and it said, uh, David Prager, your friend jo Joyce's friend Sarah is with you because <laughs> we were both at the same like, ski, oh, that's weird. ski house and it's like well we're friends too I just wasn't using sonar so it was worded weirdly and we kind of had a laugh about that um, so it's like it's the sort of service that I I can see it being kind of interesting but again I think it it takes um, it takes a really social person to find it that helpful I mean Amber if you had never met a friend of mine from high school who you happen to know is in your vicinity what are the chances that you're really gonna go up to them and say hello yeah, I think it's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of like the idea, you know, when you first mentioned it, it sounded kind of interesting in a, maybe in a business environment when you're networking, if you're at a conference or something like that. Exactly. But as far on the personal side, I don't know. It's, it seems a little uh, creepy. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it could be, and you know, it's interesting. I went to Sonar's website, and I, you know, I was just reading their FAQ, and they do say, listen, um, there are certain uh, there there are certain circumstances where Sonar works better than others, um, and they mention events full of people checking in, a conference, a concert, uh, public venues like a park or a cafe or an airport, places that maybe. An airport is actually a really good example. I went to Comic-Con over the weekend, and I was sitting at San Diego Airport for a while by myself because I got to the airport early. And it's like, you know, it might have been a situation where if I knew somebody was sitting, you know, watching the baseball game and they knew you, I might go up and say hi because I had just come from a conference where everybody was networking and I was feeling, mm. I don't know, in the mood to make conversation. So I can see it being helpful, yeah, in certain situations, probably not all situations, but I think that that's kind of how check-in services are in general. They're not always, you, know, you don't always want to be so oversherry, but in certain situations it works yeah. out well. Uh, I, I also wanted to but mention, oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was just going to say, you never know how the community is going to take them and use them. You know, they in three months from now, it could be a, a, a really interesting community that's using Sonar. So it would be fun to have them on the show as well. Yeah, agreed. Also got an email from, now Amber, it gives us an excuse to talk about the day that we were punked um, by the, wow. the guy from, was it Singapore, uh, who, who called in and, and pretended to be uh, the founder of Visually. <laughs> For anybody who watched the that live stream that day, you know what we're talking about. Anybody who didn't, oh, I wish you were here. Uh, we actually had somebody who pretended to be a guest via Skype before the actual guest ended up doing the interview. Long story. That company was visually. Now, what was kind of funny about that was the reason we were, I think, in part punked, it was because visually, the service, so that's visual.ly, hadn't actually launched yet. So we didn't know enough about the service to kind of realize that the person we were talking to might not have been legit. Well, the service has launched, um, and I got an email from the Visually team saying, hey, we're up and running. Um, Chad, if you want to take my screen, I actually used Visually in a cool way to, uh, to make kind of a, this is like an infographic uh, company. So you can use their tool to make all sorts of interesting infographics based on, on data that it can pull from your various accounts. So I ended up, this is just a little project that they're offering people just to get a kind of a sense of how Visually works. So I had added in my Twitter username and I gave uh, the API access to, to my Twitter data and I just picked a, a, girl, a little girl with bangs um, because it looked like me and I made sure my eyes were green. So it's saying that I'm a workaholic based on my tweeting behavior. Behavior spilled uh, Canadia-wise. So Amber, you probably like that. Um, it says that I'm a Love Twitter it. star because I have over 10K followers. So that's pretty cool. Um, it gives me a representation of the number of followers, uh, how many tweets I have, how, how many people follow me to every person that I follow. So it's just kind of a representation of, oh, that's kind of cool. I've never really looked at it this way. Um, I've got a 1.1 follower churn. I'm not sure if that's good or bad. Uh, I'll just say it's good. Um, new followers per day, 0.01. So I'm not gaining a lot of followers per day. Let's just, let's just 
put that right out there, but I guess the ones that I have aren't going anywhere. And then uh, some some percentages based on what it considers my chattiness, who my strongest connections are. And I actually loved this area here at the bottom, which is um, the topics that I talk about the most. Uh, Paris Lemon, I do a lot of happy faces. Um, Ace to Tech, that's Tom Merritt. Amber Mack, that's you. Um, and a few other, you know, Leo Laporte, awesome, thanks. Uh, some stuff that it's like, well, I guess it's not totally surprising that I say those things a lot, but it's it's interesting to see them lumped. Those are actually the um, the keywords that I use the most on Twitter. So I really like this visually this visually fun, service. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's that's yeah. just one little Twitter experiment that they're letting people do. You can create your own infographics as well. So if you were interested in how visually worked when we talked about it several shows back, now you can get in there and start playing around. And and if you go to visually uh, again, visual.ly, people are already creating really cool infographics, so you can kind of look through some of their, uh, yeah. some of their featured infographics. And they're sharing really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's That's one of the things that I think Visually is really great for right now because, like you said, they have limited tools to be able to create your own stuff. They have the ability to Twitterize yourself uh, and a few other things, but I love how many people are sharing infographics that they've already created or they found online. And um, I was reading an article, I think it was on TechCrunch as well, where they said Visually is becoming such a great database. If you want an infographic on any number of topics, um, it's a, a perfect resource to go and search, and you can see all of these great visual designs that people have created. Yeah, absolutely. And not just there, but elsewhere as well. Yeah, if you're interested in the the specific uh, Twitter experiment that I that I just did, if you go to v i s u a l um, dot l y slash Twitter, that's just the the permalink to get there. So you can go ahead and make your own Twitter infographic and create your little avatar. It's kind of fun. Just want to remind you guys that this is we're in a new studio. We're on the up and up. We're 18 shows in, and we love getting your feedback because it helps us not only uh, grab topics for the show, but know which what direction you want us to go in going forward and talk about the kind of stuff that you guys want to hear. Uh, write us. The social hour at twit.tv is our email address. Our voicemail address, 2626 social. I didn't even bother with voicemails this week because, well, we're in a new studio and we wanted to keep things somewhat simple. <laughs> And anybody who watched our pre-show knows that we still had technical difficulties because we're still getting stuff worked out here. So definitely want to um, want to pull from some voicemails next week. So get your questions, your comments, your feedback ready, and call us at two six two six social. Leave us a message, or you can always record a video, upload it somewhere like YouTube, or we got a social cam video sometime back, or Vimeo, or wherever you can send us a URL to a video that then we can play on our computers here. Just don't send us a, a direct file because we don't want to have to download anything. And 30 seconds is kind of the magic number. 30 seconds or less for voicemails and videos is really helpful. Uh, before we get to Amber's rad or fad, which is, Amber, I, I, don't, I don't know how you do it, but you happen to uh, outdo yourself. Um, I, you know what? I'm not even going to give anything away. I, I was going to give away a keyword, but I'm not going to. But before we do that, I want to thank Netflix really quickly for sponsoring The Social Hour. They're our second sponsor on the show today. If you're familiar with Netflix, and let's be honest, most people who watch Twit are well aware of how cool Netflix is and how instant streaming or getting DVDs mailed to your house makes movie watching or TV series watching incredible. But let's say that, I don't know, you're trying to convince a friend uh, that they could, they, could, they could cancel their cable subscription and save a lot of money and still watch all the movies that they're just watching on, you know, one of those stupid cable channels already. I mean, there are a lot of people you can help spread the word to um, to let them know how cool Netflix is. Or if for whatever reason you're not using Netflix yet, you got to check it out. If you go to netflix.com slash twit, that is the URL that lets Netflix know that you came through us. So we really appreciate you using that URL if you're going to sign up or you're going to um, to spread the word to somebody else. That's netflix.com slash T-W-I-T. And uh, if you... Um if you go there and you're just trying to get a sense of, I don't know, I mean, what's their collection like? Their instant streaming collection, which is, I actually don't use the DVD service at all. I'm instant streaming only. I don't even have DVD player hooked up to my TV. It's a true story. Um, you can... Uh, go to the uh, instant streaming queue and just get a sense of what they've got there. They've got a lot of old classics. They've got a lot of new movies, everything in between, and they're adding stuff every Justin day. Justin Bieber, Sarah? Justin Bieber. Is Justin Bieber, uh, what, what's, it, what's it called? Never, say, Never never. say Never. Is that part of Netflix instant streaming? Please say yes. That would be great. I don't know. 
I, I don't have the answer because I, I didn't realize how good of a movie it was. But now I do, Amber, so I will, I'll be looking for it uh, after All the right. show. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so Netflix, it, it's, you guys know what Netflix, how it works. Uh, we, just, we just want you to keep spreading the word because uh, we love working with them. We really believe in the service. And, uh, again, if you've, uh, you know, if you've got like a, like a, I don't know, a Wii or an Xbox 360 or, or a, a PlayStation or, or even you even have Netflix capabilities on your TV or you have a Roku, Apple TV, there are so many ways to actually use Netflix in your living room setting. iPad app. I use it all the time. You start watching a movie on the iPad app, you got to go, you, or you get home, or vice versa. Wherever you stop a movie or you pause it, you can just pick it up, uh, either at home or on the go. So it's really helpful. I mean, you can, you can get through a lot of content. Oh, and by the way, the best part I haven't even mentioned yet, your first 30 days are free with a new Netflix account. Think of how much you could watch within 30 days. You don't have to sleep. You don't have to eat. Well, you probably should eat. Uh, and you could get through the, the whole however many seasons of Buffy. I think Tom and Eileen are doing that right now, or they did recently. Netflix.com slash twit. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Thanks for sponsoring the social hour. Okay, fine. Uh, while we were, while we were uh, uh, getting through that ad, Chad, just uh, <laughs> thanks for the, uh, the big text. He just informed me, hey, I don't actually have video. You have to play the video from your computer. I'm happy to do that, Chad. I just don't know if, uh, are we going to get audio out as well? Really? Just with this guy? That's amazing. All right. Well, Amber, should we? Should, do you want to set up this video, or do you want me to just play it, or what do you want to do? Uh, you, you know what? Why don't you just play it? Okay. We're just going to play it. All right, everyone. Here we go. Hello, ladies. Don't look at your man. Look at me, your new Old Spice guy, Fabio. Blah, blah, blah. Look at back. Mine is a horse. Old Spice product wash. The old Old Spice guy was no good. He give you diamonds from a clamfish? Dumb. Fabio give you pearls all the time. Blow wind. Fabio. Fabio challenges you, old old spice guy. 9 a.m. tomorrow, internet. Duel? Duel. All right, Amber. What the heck is going on here, and why is Fabio the new old spice guy? Well, Sarah, you know, the Old Spice campaign has been one of the most successful social media campaigns of all time. Totally true. And uh, now they've... They've come out with a new character, uh, Fabio, who we all have known, maybe not loved, but known for a while. And he is in their latest videos that they've released online. And he sort of presents a challenge uh, to the real Old Spice guy. And I guess the, the plan or expectation is that they will have some type of back and forth. So the real Old Spice guy isn't gone away forever, but they have introduced Fabio. Uh, as for his video and uh, uh, the uh, funny level, I would say that on a scale of 1 to 10, it's closer to a, a 3 or a 4. So I can't wait till the Old Spice guy comes back. So this is, um, I mean... Uh, not even a very good fad, then, in your opinion. This it's, is, this uh, is no, the, the think, old fad. You know, sometimes things need to just die off a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, or keep something that was doing well. Like, the old Spice guy was a huge success. So I don't know if you can introduce someone like Fabio, who uh, he works, I guess, in certain uh, contexts. But in this, it, it's just not that funny. Yeah. Th I, so I, I would say he might be a fad. Yeah, I I am totally with you on Fad. I never really got the Fabio thing. Uh, I know that he was on the cover of a lot of romance novels. I mean, the 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 I think the problem with him is that there are a lot of people who might have enjoyed that Old Spice campaign and for anybody who's just like, I don't even know what the Old Cam Spice campaign was, it was uh, a lot of the, you know, a guy named Mustafa, who's, a, who's an actor, who did a lot of these funny Old Spice ads. But what they also did was, was genius. And everybody was, I mean, they just loved this idea, was that they were having people tweet at the Old Spice Twitter account and then he would create a video and upload it really quick to their, I think it was their YouTube channel, that would answer people. So it was like, oh my gosh, this is so totally funny. interactive. They're just sitting there waiting for us to say something. And, and it was like a, I don't know, maybe like a 12-hour period where the, the, the Old Spice team was working on this and got a lot of success. And people loved it and thought it was really funny. Fabio, to many of these people, they probably have no idea who he is or why he's cool. I mean, I guess he's kind of become this ha-ha type of a, oh, look, it's Fabio type of a thing. But I don't know how many people even realize where he came from originally. I mean, it was 
cover of romance novels because she kind of got you know big muscles and long blonde hair and that yeah. sort of thing. But uh, I, I don't see Old Spice unless it's kind of like a Rick Astley. I can't believe you got Fabio. It's not going to fly. Type I don't of think. a thing. Yeah, I I see it as fad and maybe not even a very good fad. Exactly. Oh, Sarah, I have to say, I know we're just about to wrap the show. My son has just arrived uh, back at the car, so Wonderful. good timing on my end. But I wanted to do three really quick things before we go. Please do. We have Guy Kawasaki on in two weeks. Yay! It's going to be awesome. I'll try to book uh, Scott Stratton for next week, so that will be a fantastic show. He's very opinionated and very funny. Absolutely. And also, if uh, any of our audio listeners are watching this video back because I am in my car, I just want to say that, number one, I'm not drinking beer. It's a giant can of iced tea. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my makeup is stored overhead in uh, my luggage, so uh, I'm au natural this week. Amber, That's you look, coming. you look, I mean, first of all, I didn't even notice that you weren't wearing makeup because you're just pretty anyway. But you look great. Uh, you didn't sound drunk okay. if you were worried about that. Um, and I know that you wouldn't be drinking and driving anyway. And um, uh, Thank you, Sarah. This is very good timing because now Connor's back and you want to go hang out yeah, with your family. Yeah, so probably jump or it could get a little chaotic. Probably get some fresh air while you're at it, too. Amber, thank you so much. Thanks so much for Thanks, um, for for sticking with us through, you know, our first new studio show, which was a little rocky, but I think overall a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, it was lots of fun. We'll be in touch this week, and I can't wait. Uh, hopefully we'll get Scott on next week. If not, uh, we'll definitely have him on sometime in the future. And until then, see you online, everybody. Thanks for watching The Social Hour. Bye, Amber. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye, everybody.